All right, let's, I, I think we all understand how we got to the point that so many homes were needing to be foreclosed upon. Right. It's, the, it's these errors in the paperwork that has caused this uh, most recent problem. Let's talk about that. Yeah. It, robo signings and all kinds of things like that. Right. I mean, things that most of us have never even heard about have occurred. Right. Well, what's, what happened was there were, so many, uh, there were so many bad loans that the banks had to foreclose on because of the practices they were engaged in a few years ago that they... Um, they had so many to get through the factory mill that they started hiring incompetent people off the street to simply help them get through 100,000 foreclosures a year, you know, these, these huge amounts of numbers. So they hired people to simply sign affidavits because when you foreclose on a property, you got to prove uh, I, you owe me the money, you haven't paid me, and I have all the documentation to prove it. So they filed these affidavits with the court showing all this. Well, they hired people to just simply go and sign a whole bunch of affidavits without any knowledge of what they were doing. And what I've been reading about this, when you file a foreclosure on someone, mm -hmm. it's complicated. I mean, there's a lot of paperwork to be done, right? Absolutely. And it, as it should be, you're taking somebody's property from right. them. So you should have to cross your T's and dot your I's. And when you go through these kind of practices and procedures, there are all kinds of errors in these documents. We at Consumer Warning Network, we've been telling people people for three years. Be careful if you're in foreclosure because these banks have created such a mess that you have got to assure yourself that the right person is suing you uh, and has the right to sue you. And even the right bank is suing you, That's right? what I mean, the right bank. Because back when they were encouraging all these, for, uh, all these mortgages, literally by the time a, uh, a, lend, a borrower left the closing and the door shut behind them, the bank, the bank had already sold and resold and resold their mortgage three, four times, sliced them up and sold them off in Switzerland as securities. Now, do you think they kept up with the paperwork? No. The, <laughs> the paperwork is a mess. And so we have seen story after story where when you tell the bank, wait a minute, if you're suing me, you have to prove you have my original promissory note because that's what gives you the right, right to take my property. And when you say, produce that note, I want to see the original note. And they say, well, here's a copy. You say, no, 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 no. You've got to show you have the original note. Quite often when that happens, the uh, bank suddenly goes away because they look in their files and they don't have the original note. And that's because they created such a paperwork mess that now you know, they're caught with it, which is why it's important for homeowners to assert their rights. It's not about you know, getting the property for free. It's about simply saying, hey, if you're going to take my property, have the courtesy to do it in the right way. Uh, and, and demanding that may buy you some more time if they if they have trouble finding the original note you were quoted in an article in the uh, Wall Street Journal over the weekend the mm -hmm. article is called a foreclosure sitcom and mm -hmm. it, it, you compare the yeah. bank's latest antics to a, an episode of I Love Lucy. We've got a clip, Absolutely. and I'm going to read what you said. Lucy and Ethel are working beside a chocolate factory conveyor belt. Their job is to wrap chocolates in paper, but the chocolates whip by so fast they can't paper them all. Panic, they'll be fired. They start devouring the chocolates and stuffing them under their hats. Keeping up with the paperwork was Lucy's job and what these robo-signers were trying to do. You're, you say this was basically the same thing. This is exactly the same thing. They couldn't keep up with it, so uh, they, you know, they simply started cutting corners left and right. Now, this is th the solution for the bank was simply not to hire Lucy and Ethel to do it, <laughs> but to hire some competent people and enough people to go through this process. Right. And this has been a story now for three years. What's, what's shocking to me is the banks are pretending they're shocked now. To because in this. the last couple of weeks it's really blown up and these banks have recognized or been caught at this. Yes. They, they only, they're, they're shocked now only because they've been outed. Because some depositions were taken across the country of various people who admitted. I simply signed two, three, four hundred affidavits a day. I had no idea what I was signing. Uh, this has been a known story for some time, but once it came out, now the banks say, oh, we're going to have to stop the foreclosures for a while. All right, let's pick it up from there then. Let's right. talk about when, if you're being foreclosed on, mm -hmm. up on, on, I'm not really sure where the phrase is, do you, and it's halted, mm -hmm. where are you in the whole process? If you're the homeowner and you, you know you've been in foreclosure, then all of a sudden you're not, where are you? You're in limbo. Uh, it's hard to describe it el elsewise because you literally you don't know what to do. Should I, should I make payments? Should I not make payments? Are they going to take my property? Are they not going to take my property? This is a mess. To, to halt foreclosures 
to put them in moratorium is not a solution to anything because it puts the homeowner in a bind, the bank is in a bind, the mark housing market is in a bind because they don't know whether they're going right. to buy this property or not. It's an awful solution. But even worse is to go ahead and let these foreclosures go through when maybe they're not the right bank to be suing you. Well, can we assume though that if you are being foreclosed on, you have been in some sort of trouble. I mean, there's you. Some payments have not been made. Sure. Right. Exactly. So, are, are and we're going to take a break here. But are you recommending that you just live like you've been living if you've been living in the house without paying for it or anything like that? Continue as such until this thing gets resolved. Yes, and put the money aside every month that you uh, that you might be owing. Put the money aside so that when. When it finally comes down to this is the right bank that's uh, you know to take your property, you at least have some money to deal with. Or call the bank and say, well, while we're in a moratorium here, how about talking to me as yeah. an individual? I'd like to stay here. I'd like to work something out with you. I'd like to renegotiate the nut loan and maybe do something so that I don't have to get kicked out, you don't have to lose money, and we can all gain in this. Let's take a break because I want to pick up with that when we come back because that's not been easy for a lot of people no. to do up until now. We were talking about talking to the bank and seeing if they're willing. And and you you have a lot of stories of people who have been emailing you guys saying every day uh, banks won't talk to me. Every day we get we get stories from homeowners saying, I'm I'm trying to renegotiate my loan. I want to stay here in the house. I don't want to be foreclosed on. Uh, I I'm willing to pay something. You know, I, my my wife lost her job or something's happened, but I want to stay here and work with me and let's renegotiate this this loan. The banks won't return their calls. The banks lose their paperwork after after talking to them for two or three months. The banks are not cooperating with homeowners in renegotiating these loans. These are the same homeowners whose taxpayer dollars bail these banks out of trouble three years ago. And and that's the rub that gets so many people upset when you when you start talking about that. All right, I want to there, here's the next part of this graphic I want to show. These are the counties with the highest foreclosure rates in the state of Florida. I mean this is a problem that we all know has been huge in this state and with this, where, where does it leave us? I mean, you've got, you've got people who are saying, okay, I'll buy a foreclosed home if I can get a good deal on it. What do you recommend to somebody who's in a situation like that? What if they're looking at some property? Well, as long as it's in uh, a, a moratorium, it's very difficult to give advice as to what a person should do who wants to buy it, unless he gets the buyer, uh, I mean, the, the seller and the lender all to cooperate in selling this home to him. Uh, it's, it's, it's just too much of a limbo. Certainly. Pro property that doesn't have any mortgage on it, uh, it becomes more marketable right. because you can you can negotiate right away, you can deal with it, you can close on it, you're perfectly safe. But a home that's in foreclosure, uh, you've you as a buyer have to be a little bit concerned about well what's going to happen with this foreclosure? What if it's not the right bank? Uh, you know what if the paperwork's not right? So uh, this is hurting. This is going to hurt the real estate market, but. But foreclosing on property you don't own hurts the market too. Right. There's no, there's no good solution. The banks got us into this trouble to begin with, I think, and the banks need to cooperate in getting us out of trouble by starting to deal with homeowners in, as individuals, working with them to try to keep them in these homes, uh, and and get us through this crisis this way. But just simply uh, uh, signing hundreds of affidavits a day uh, is not going to is not the solution. Uh, you you you've got to the banks have to start seeing their bottom line get impacted by helping us out with this problem. And so far it's not been effective. No. We are, uh, how long, how long will we go on with the system of, with the financial institutions of heads you win, tails we lose. Yeah. And that's how it always is with finance. When they're in trouble they get bailed out. After they get bailed out, they, they, they distribute billions of dollars to their shareholders, they give all kinds of of uh, a bonus payments to their uh, employees uh, and then when it comes time to taking somebody's home they hire somebody off the street right. at minimum wage to sign affidavits. The problem is so bad and this issue is so great right now that the attorneys general in all 50 states file a lawsuit to look into this thing and right. try to figure out what has happened and if there is any way to fix it and how long and no way to figure out how long it's going to take to no. fix it. Is and we at Consumer Warning Network we have been sending copies of emails to attorneys general across this country for the past two years, sending, sending them emails to the attorney general of Rhode Island or whoever saying, look at what somebody in your state is saying is happening to them. You should do something about it. And we've been doing this now for at least two years. Now suddenly the attorney generals, it's, pub it's public, it's a big issue, now they're all on the bandwagon to do something about it. I'm sorry, but if I'm a little cynical about their their good faith in, in right. waiting so long to do something, but at least they're doing something. Well, and we're going to have to go, and you're going to get, make the answer quick. Do you think finally now something is going to get done? Uh, not until you start 
affecting the banks directly. If you and I filed a false affidavit to take somebody's property, we'd be in jail. Well, somebody needs to start going to jail. Somebody needs to start getting financially penalized for this kind of activity. Then you get their attention. We'll leave it there.